Hello everyone, it's Nadie, and today we're going over the best and worst of Butete for February 2021. As you beautiful people know, this is about the products, not the people behind them. Any tiff you may have with them, please cast it away because this is a channel of positive energy, okay? Thank you. Oh, my little marshmallow stuffed Oreos, how you doing today? I hope wherever you're at in the world, you're having a marvelous day so far. I myself am doing wonderful. I'm getting an early start, so I have the whole rest of the day to just do nothing. <laughs> yeah, right, as if I'm ever doing nothing. No, but I can't at least sit down and do some work, so that's exciting. But over this last month, we've had some really good and some really shitty products. If you're new here and haven't watched one of these videos yet, that's okay. Hi, how you doing? Please feel free to subscribe. But I have three different categories. We have the Yas category, we have the Mac category and then the worst, which is sometimes labeled the shit factory because some of those products honestly are shit. But fortunately we had a good month and nothing was too terrible. And within the categories there really is no order, but this first product I was probably the most shocked about and that is the Blockbuster palette. Oh my god, it still smells like Halloween makeup. I've had this little hoe airing out for days and it's still stinky. But the moment Trend Mood posted this, which is where I saw it, everybody was dragging it because of the color story. I mean, we could have done better. Better. Like these three browns, they do have different undertones, but they blend out to be very, very similar. Like we could have had a bright, vibrant red in there. And even some of the commenters when I posted this review said the exact same thing because if you remember Blockbuster, there are little red stickers. I think that was Blockbuster. But honestly, the color story was the worst part about this palette. The rest of it was really fucking good. Like the quality was bangable. This is the kind of shit that I'm very happy to rewind and keep playing with. And the packaging is so fucking cute. And I got this on clear at Hot Topic for like nine or ten dollars and I think it's on clearance because most of the people that probably shop at Hot Topic don't really even know what this is. Good thing it wasn't inspired by a VHS otherwise it'd probably be two dollars on clearance. But this palette was actually one of my favorite things to review this month just because it did a full 180. I thought this was gonna be dusty and chalky and just pure shit but it actually turned out to be pretty freaking good and I've used this since reviewing it. Then another product that I'm very pleasantly surprised about but kind of pissed that it was so good is the Marc Jacobs. Jacobs Cafe Concealer and Foundation. It looks great, but it also is kind of expensive and you do kind of use a lot when you use it as a foundation. However, I guess in a weird way, kind of lucky for me, it doesn't look good as a foundation on my skin, but as a concealer, holy fucking tits. This look, <coughs> stop Ron. No, no, BB. <coughs> no. <coughs> Woof. <coughs> Woof. <coughs> See, I can do it too. We're getting nowhere. Woof. <laughs> this just looked so beautiful and so natural. Oh, fuck, and I love this smell so much. It smells just like an oatmeal bath, although this one kind of looks yellow on me. I might have to switch this out. Maybe not. I can't tell. I don't know. My skin color changes on the daily. So I'll finally find something that matches me, and then a week later, don't even fucking bother. But as a concealer, even on my dry under eyes, this just looked bomb. It wore really, really nicely. It did kind of fade somewhat. Pretty much everything that I've ever used always fades right there, and that's where this fade too. But if you're in the market for something pretty and natural, definitely check out the Marc Jacobs extra shot. I mean, have you seen Marc Jacobs? I would definitely take one of his shots any day. Especially if he were dressed up like a cowboy, like how I want to be when I use my next favorite item, the Wild West palette. Look at that little transition we did. No, but I was very surprised that I liked this one so much because typically I do kind of talk a little bit of shit about naked palettes because they are so fucking overdone. Like, how many of these do we have? I can't be the only one that really thinks they should retire the whole naked theme. It had its moment. This would have been just as good if this were just the Wild West palette. I don't get why they keep on with the naked thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love anything naked, but I kind of hope sometime in the near future they rebrand, but that's really the only negative thing about this palette, if that's even considered a negative. The formula on this was great. I personally thought it was pretty much as good as their other naked palettes, and I don't know why the quality would be any different than the other palettes, because you literally get every single shade that we've already gotten in a naked palette. However, we do have two kind of bright greens. I say bright green very loosely, but at least it's color. But even though I get this palette shit, I'm just teasing. It is actually very, very good. Like, I totally recommend it to anybody. You could get so many looks with this. It's buttery, it's pigmented, it's creamy. Everything just blends itself out, and I love those kind of palettes where it's just effortless to work with, because then I want to pick it back up. And I cannot wait to play with this guy some more. It was just very pleasant to use. And I'm just so excited to put on some assless chaps, a mini cowboy hat, and smear this 
all over my face again. And the shimmers are creamy enough that you could probably smear them on other things too for a little bit of friction. Then moving down our list to our second to last item in this category, we have the Jaclyn Cosmetics New Liquid Lipstick Collection, which I do still own, but they're spread out in between my own liquid lipstick collection. I'm just too fucking lazy to go pick them out. But I was very pleasantly surprised. The only bundle that I could personally score because don't even fucking get me started. The only bundle I could get was the mini one with four liquid lipsticks or three lipsticks and a lip gloss. It ended up being, I think, $25. And so I think each lip product was around five or $6. It was a very, very good deal, especially for the quality because I thought they were great. I didn't really know what to expect because we all know why. But at least when it comes to the products, this brand kind of did a full 180. They're very comfortable on the lips. The colors for the most part, I thought were really pretty. One didn't really want to work on me, but I think it just clashed with my skin tone. The packaging was cute. They were just really nice to work with. The only issue that I had, which I did get a little hot about in my review, was the fact that they launched five fucking minutes early, which means they were completely sold out by the time their promoted launch time actually came around. So that to me is just poor ethics when it comes to business. But the products themselves, they were good, at least what I tried. Then last up, we have the Ordinary Can Squeeze Squee. I love this shit so fucking much. This is a very close second between this and the Marc Jacobs Can Squeeze Squee. In fact, on no makeup makeup days, I actually kind of prefer this, not just because it is under $7, but the tiniest amount of this will cover your whole damn body as well as whoever you're sleeping with. Like this little tube will probably last me an entire lifetime. After I reviewed these, did I order four more of them? You bet your wax taint I did. The only issue that I really have with these is like most of their face products, they do kind of want to run on the yellowy side. And if they don't start out yellow, they kind of want to oxidize to orange. So I don't love that, but if you get the correct shades, you can kind of mix them like how I do. And in my opinion, I'm pretty sure this is a dupe for the It Bye Bye Under Eyes, which was my all-time favorite concealer until this and the Marc Jacobs popped up. Don't get me wrong, I will always love Bye Bye Under Eyes, but this is so much more affordable, which means I have more money for cheap wine. So it's a win-win. Now on to our meh category. We're gonna start this bitch off with a Dragon Beauty Birthday Palette. You know, the quality of this actually was very good. I don't have any issue with that. But this is a $30 palette, which means that each of these is like $6. I get this is is, I believe, an independently owned brand. However, you really cannot create a lot of looks with just this palette. You can if you have all three palettes in this series, and they do go together very, very nicely, but for 15 shadows, that would be $90. Which is getting up there in price with Natasha Denona, Pat McGrath, and honey, this is neither of those brands. I also think that one of these shadows, in my opinion, is kind of a throwaway, which is 21. I'm not even sure why there's a shadow called 21 in here. And the fucking shade Cake Cake cake, which I get is like a common term, but it also sounds like KKK. I'm sorry, but why the fuck? It just, to me, kind of seems very tasteless. But anyways, 21 is, to me, a throwaway shadow, which brings the rest of the shadows up to $7.50 a piece. I like the color story, I really do. It'll go perfectly with the other palette from this brand that I have, but for the price, I expect more, and for the price, I think we deserve more. Quality-wise, though, fabulous. Like, you cannot knock it until you try it. However, even though this is about the products and not the people behind it, I do know that the person behind it is kind of like problematic. And so even if this is the best palette in the fucking world, people are still gonna knock it. That is why you should always be a nice person. And then we have a product that I must have returned because I don't see it anywhere. And that is the Coochie Gucci Foundation. First of all, that fucking price tag, it's almost $70. Like I know it's Gucci, but come the fuck on, man. But I was actually able to get a decent color match with this, which is very rare. And I probably would have liked this more if it were priced like how it should have been, which in my opinion is like, the $20 to $30 range. And it really made my skin look super dry unless I caked on the moisturizer beforehand. Like I'd have to go in with a cream and then a moisturizing primer and then a moisturizing setting spray. I'd have to take a trip to the local gym locker room to get extra moisture on my face. But after all of that moisture was added to my skin, it did look pretty decent. But I don't think it looked any better than like my Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation. I think that's what it's called. And at least with the Photo Focus Foundation, I don't have to slap on a gallon of moisturizer beforehand. So it wasn't terrible enough to be in the lowest category. It certainly wasn't good enough to be in the top category. And when you're paying 70 bucks for something, it shouldn't be just okay. Like for that price, I expect a half naked pool boy to come with it. And no ma'am, it did not. So totally not worth it. Finally for this category, we have the Clinique Foundation, which I initially thought that the shade range sucked ass, mainly because their swatch pictures online did not do them any kind of justice. However, once I saw this in the store, it actually does have a decent shade range. And just like the Coochie Gucci Foundation, it was just good. Like this reminded me of something that I could pick up affordably at a drugstore. I feel like the finish of this was very reminiscent to like ColourPop. However, I think this added a little bit more texture to my skin 
than the ColourPop one does. And it wasn't until the oils seeped through my skin that this actually started to look good. And that was like the middle of the fucking day. But when it did start to look good, it looked really good. But also, I'm not gonna wake up at 4 a.m. to put this on just so that it looks good by 8 a.m. Because when my oils did come through, this kind of wiped the fuck off very easily. Like, I don't want a foundation where there's a minuscule window where it actually works for me. And then five minutes after it starts working, it just blows off in the damn wind. However, when I did a full glam look with this and I had contour and concealer and everything on, it did look really good. So if you're doing a full glam day, then yeah, you probably would like this because you can't really notice the texture. But if you're looking for something natural looking with like a soft photo finish, this is not it, honey. At least it wasn't for me. It could look great on other people. Plus, I love the fact that it's shaped like a butt plug. That alone makes this a winner. And on to our final category, the worst products. Oh, and this first one makes me so sad because I really have heard nothing but good things about this brand until this palette came out. And that is the Burner Phone by Makeup A Murder. I will be honest, I'm not gonna hold this palette against them. Like, I am obsessed with the brand and have heard that their palettes normally have exceptional formulas. This was the first product from them that I tried, but it was just ashy. It was not fun to work with. I think the best part about this was the packaging, but also I don't really fully understand the colors in it. Why are the colors all like bubbles and pastels and unicorn farts? I want colors that are bold and not ashy and doesn't look like an Easter egg inside. Not to mention the quality of the shadows themselves just was not good. It wasn't fun to work with. A majority of the shades just ended up blending out and kind of turning muddy. I thought maybe I was crazy and ended up watching a few other reviews on this palette and a lot of people said the exact same things that I did. But because I've heard nothing but glowing reviews from everything else that they come out with, I am so gonna be like first in line when they come out with the next collection. Like if it were any other brand, this palette alone probably would have turned me off of any future products, but people love them. They have like a cult following, which I admire for an indie brand. So their other products, supposedly great. This, total shit. And I actually only have one other product in this category. I know it's kind of a letdown. I live for the juicy worst products, but it definitely does deserve its place down on the bottom. That is the Color Beauty Self-Adjusting Foundation, which mother of shit, I did not realize that was like a common thing. Here I thought we were testing something that's completely innovative, but I guess self-adjusting foundations have been done for years by a lot of drugstore companies, so I am just not in it. Just not up to date, yo diggity. But this one did indeed change colors. I ended up getting the lightest shade and it matched my skin, I would say pretty perfectly until it turned orange. And then after it turned orange, it made my skin look so crusty and scaly and beyond dry. Like any way that it could be applied, I did it, except for with a peony, which wasn't an option at that point. But then after an hour, maybe even less, it was coming the fuck off of my skin. It was patchy. Like my underwear stays on longer at a party than this stayed on my face, which is shocking. I loved the idea for a second. I really liked the color match, but in the end, it just was not for me. I don't know who it's for. And then I don't normally include skincare shit on here, but a lot of people ask what are my favorite skincare things that I use. And I'm gonna be real, pretty much every month I switch my skincare up based on whatever I get in BoxyCharm. But there definitely are a few products that are permanently in my routine. One of them being the KPS Antioxidant Eye Serum. I love this stuff so much. This is a local brand. The people behind it are beautiful and wonderful. I love them to death and their products are actually fabulous. These products give your skin what they need to be able to heal and recover and they go deep into the skin. Like, I love them. And then another product that I will always fucking have is the Good Molecules Yerba Mate Under Eye Gel. This stuff is so good. It like instantly makes me look awake. It's cooling, it's revitalizing, and this is a very, very affordable brand, similar to The Ordinary, where they have great products, but super kind of inexpensive. And this product I initially got in my BoxyCharm, but I keep repurchasing it. I love it. It's Grown Alchemist Matte Moisturizer. It really does a great job at mattifying, but it still adds moisture to your skin, but it doesn't make me look greasy or oily throughout the day. It's just great. And because it was in BoxyCharm, you can find it on eBay for like 10 or 15 bucks. So if you do try it, stock the fuck up through that. And speaking of The Ordinary, I actually use a lot of their products, but one of my favorites from them is the Peeling Solution. Holy shit. If you aren't down to quite yet get an actual chemical peel, this is a great alternative. It's light, but like at the same time, it's kind of harsh, but not so harsh that it's damaging. I haven't used it in a few weeks because the sun is finally out here in Michigan and you can't be in the sun after you use this. And I actually think I'm gonna go in and start getting like actual deep chemical peels, but this is a great alternative and it's so freaking affordable. Plus this little bottle will last you ages. You only need a little bit of it and you get all this. Plus look at that color. Oh, it's divine. And then this next product, I honestly don't absolutely love it. I only use it because I have it and I don't know that I'll repurchase it, but I have kind of been enjoying using it. That is the Milk Makeup Kush Lip Scrub. It's kind of inconsistent because I think it must have like sugar or something in it. It's very 
very, very rough, but it's also kind of patchy and like in certain layers, there's not a lot of roughness. It's more like a lip balm, but then in other layers, it's literally like I'm taking glass to my lips, but I also kind of like that. But to soften the sugar up and really make this my bitch, I like it and then go in with it on my lips. Oh yeah. Oh God. Oh, see, there was a really sharp shard in there, but it does a good job at exfoliating, so I keep using it. And then finally, we have another exfoliator. This is go-to exfoliating swipies. Another product I got in BoxyCharm, and it doesn't look like you get very many in here, but these are so freaking thin. I probably have like a year's worth in here still. But you peel one off, and it's basically like a mini sandpaper roll. And I usually go around my nose in this area and right there, and holy God, does it do a good job. Like after I've done a look and I've wiped all the makeup off with one of those makeup erasers, then I've gone in with like an oil, and then I've washed my face. After all of that, I'll go in with one of these, and I'll still end up pulling up foundation. This shit just scrubs to a whole new level. If only I could do that with my personality. Anyways, there we go. This was so fun. I always love doing these kinds of videos. And thank you so much for being here. I love having you. And if you'd like to support me and my channel a little bit more, please feel free to join us over on Patreon. It's patreon.com slash poplix. There you get videos a day early. You get Patreon-only content. Plus, best part, it is cheap, fun, and fancy just like me. And like always, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below so that you're notified anytime I upload a new video. Don't forget my newest collection of highlighters, including Black Ice, which does change from black to white, is available at thepoplux.com. Also, my latest album, Kiss of Fame, is available everywhere online that music is sold. Thank you so much to everyone who's supporting them. Comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Snapchat, Instagram, and Twitter at OfficialNady, and you can follow me online at thepoplux.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all, and I will see you again soon. Bye. Bye.